Hello, and welcome to the online section of CS11, Introduction to Programming with C++. My name is Steve Hodges. Please call me Steve. Our online course uses the Cabrillo's Canvas system from the Cabrillo's front page at cabrillo.edu. One way that you can get to the Canvas site is by using the small link that says Canvas. When you select that, you'll be able to log in with your Cabrillo account name and password. If you do not know your account name and password, you can use this link here. If you select that, you'll need to know your last name and your date of birth and your student ID, and then you can reset your password. Let's go back. Once you log in with your account name and password, you'll be taken to the Canvas site where you can select um, our section, CS11. Once you've selected the course, you should see something that looks like this. Here on the uh, home page, you should be able to see this uh, welcome message and also have some information about upcoming things in, in the class. The course uses several different sections, and so let's take a look at these. We can look at the modules section. In this uh, video, uh, the displays that I see won't look exactly the same as the ones that you see um, because uh, here I'm seeing the uh, instructor view, and I can temporarily switch on a uh, student view but uh, I can't keep it turned on uh, long enough to uh, run through the whole video. So some of the things that I see, for example, these controls over here, uh, you won't see. The modules represent the different blocks of uh, content that are available in the class. At the top, you'll see uh, CS11, Introduction to Programming with C++, and including a link to the syllabus and the content calendar. And we'll come back and take a look at those in a moment. Under Course Documents and References, we see a list of important reference information, links to the text editors that you'll need for this class. If you're on Windows, there's a link here to a tutorial for installing Sigwin. Under the lecture and lab videos, there are, uh, for your convenience, links to the YouTube videos that I've published for the uh, lectures and labs, and these are basically in order that you'll want to work through them. Under the example programs are a list of programs that I use in the example lectures. You can download the completed program from here if you're interested. And under uh, programming assignments, you can see the eight programming assignments and the rubrics used to grade those assignments um, as those are published. Um, when you first start the class, you'll probably only be able to see the very first assignment, assignment zero. Under the discussions section, have discussion if you have questions about the uh, course, the textbook, uh, the material, uh, C++ commands, the lectures, the lab videos, and so on. This is the best place to, to ask those questions. You may feel that your questions are stupid or basic, or maybe you're embarrassed to ask them, but I hope that you will post them so that when I answer them, um, we can be answering those questions for the entire class. Under the um, quizzes tab, this is where the uh, final exam will show up for you, uh, and the uh, midterm exam. Uh, in this class, we're going to have a practice midterm, and then an actual midterm, and then a, a final exam, and those will be administered through uh, Canvas. All right, let's take a look at the um, course syllabus. Now, the actual link to syllabus isn't the course syllabus. Uh, this in um, Canvas shows the items that have due dates on them. And so here we can see the uh, eight uh, assignments. Uh, once the midterm and practice midterm and final exam are um, assigned, those will show up um, in here as well. What I think of as the course syllabus is actually under the modules section, and that's this link here that says syllabus. We'll take a look at that in just a moment. First, let me show you this item here, the content calendar or checklist. Many of the documents in this class are uh, PDF documents, and um, you'll be able to download those um, directly to your own computer if you, if you um, uh, would like to have those documents locally. Okay, so this is the CS11 content calendar, and I've created this um, basically so that you have a checkoff list. Um, my idea is that you could actually print this out on paper and check off the various boxes as you complete um, the various uh, uh, items in the course, and this will help you make sure that you're keeping on track and not falling behind. It's divided into weeks, 
and is basically in order that I think you should be accomplishing those tasks. So, for example, during the first week, you'll watch um, lectures 0, 1A, and 1B, the introductory lectures. In the textbook, you'll read sections 1.1 through 1.6. Then you'll watch the lab number one video, and, and so on. Let's take a look at the um, syllabus. Please review this. I just want to uh, highlight a few things from the course syllabus. In here, it lists the expected skills coming into the course. This is an introductory programming course. Uh, it is not uh, expected or required that you have had any previous programming experience. Uh, what is expected, though, is that you're a proficient computer user. And so, for example, you wouldn't have any problems with file management, uh, compressing and uncompressing uh, folders, uh, installing and configuring software, uh, editing text, um, you know, sending emails, dealing with attachments, uh, managing through a, uh, you know, an online course management system here like Canvas, and so on. Um, these are skills that you would get in a typical uh, computer literacy type course, such as the CS1 and 1L um, course that we have at Cabrillo College. The textbook for this course is C++ for Everyone, second edition uh, by Kay Horseman. Uh, this is the same textbook that is used in the other CS11 sections, so there should be plenty of uh, new and used copies on campus. Uh, you can order paper copies from the usual uh, your textbook sources such as Amazon or our own bookstore, and it's also available in uh, ebook form. At, uh, we mentioned, okay, that there's going to be a midterm and a final. There will be eight programming assignments, and for the programming assignments, uh, the way that they're going to work is that they have a specified um, due date um, that's very specific. Um, you don't want to be late. Assignments are going to um, always be due at 7 p.m. After the assignments are due, I will post a, a sample solution and encourage you to post your own solutions and then we can discuss. I'll get the assignments graded as, as quickly as I can so that you have the feedback on um, how your program did when I uh, tested it. Each of the assignments has a, a rubric attached to it and those are also available um, to you. Your grade in this course, oh, here it says Blackboard, I'll have to change that to Canvas. Uh, this is the first time I've used Canvas, and um, and we're going to expect some glitches and typos um, in in the course. Um, hopefully, please don't panic when those those come up. Um, I won't panic either, and we'll get those straightened um, out. Uh, if you see anything that's confusing as you're working through the course, uh, please contact me so I can uh, answer your questions and get those things straightened out. Uh, your grade in this class is going to come uh, from the programming assignments, the midterm and final exam, class participation, and the completion of the uh, um, lab exercises. The class participation grade comes from your uh, participation in the class discussion area, and you can earn full points during the first week by responding to the welcome post and updating your student profile. And then in the subsequent weeks, so weeks two through seven, you can get full points if you post two useful uh, posts uh, per week. Okay. Um, there's information about uh, getting help and expectations for the course. Please do review those. The expectation is that the programming assignments that you turn in is your own individual and original work and not the work of other folks. So um, please keep that in mind um, when you're working on the uh, course. If you have any questions about the requirements of the course, including the academic integrity policy and so on, please contact me. It's much easier to work out those questions at a time than it is to deal with problems after they arise. Okay, so here I'm looking at the student view for assignment zero. So this is roughly what you'll see when you look at uh, one of the assignments. And the important thing is the submit assignment button here, which you want to click at some time before the assignment is due in order to submit your assignment. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. And you can add any text comments if you need to. The important thing is to actually submit a file. All right, let's pretend that here I've completed this assignment and written, made a file called hello.cpp as directed in the assignment, and now I want to submit this. First, I'm going to need to create a zip archive. So on OS X, I can do that by saying compress. And here, 
the file I need to submit is need to be needs to be called hello.zip. So here we'll have to rename this to hello.zip. And now I want to choose that file. So here I'll select choose file, hello.zip, and choose. Once again, I can add any comments I need to, and then here click submit assignment. And at that point, um, I will have um, uploaded the assignment. If you've completed the assignment on time, once it's graded, you will be able to submit a revised version to earn back um, some of the points that you have lost um, if there were mistakes or issues uh, in your program. And I'll tell you more about those details in um, our class discussion. Okay, well, I think that about wraps up the quick tour of our online Canvas site. Please do contact me if you have any questions. Thank you.